My name is Robinson Parkley, and I'm an incoming junior at Arcadia High School in Arcadia, California. I love Arcadia High School. I have made some of my best friends here, from hardcore gamers, to excellent debaters, to meticulous writers. I have enjoyed my time learning from valued teachers, discussing such things like the rebellious aspect of Hoden in Capturing the Rye, and talking about the political implications of communist China. And I have also grown as a person, learning about myself and who I want to be. Yet I truly believe love is an abstract that is more than just pride and words of commendation. Love is willing to nurture growth in another. Love is willing to acknowledge grave mistakes and work to mend the damage. Love is willing to say that this is not right and work to do the right thing when one is not willing to admit their crimes. I love Arcadia High School, but today I'll be taking that love largely to talk about a disease which plagues the students here. This story is not about me. It's about the fears and stresses of students, the cultural divides found in diverse forms of parental guidance, and the woeful, malign neglect that an administration is willing to endorse for the sake of reputation. What I am about to share is a phenomenon every student catches onto as they grow older from a freshman to a senior. Every student knows about what I'm about to talk about here. However, this will be the first time in a major formal capacity in which this experience is told to adults and people who have not recently attended AHS. I implore you to listen, no matter where you come from, to listen to the tragedy of toxic competition. We are not normal American teenagers. Not just because we have higher test averages and not because not just because every continuous year students go to Ivy League schools. No, it is the glory, the prestige, and reputation that academics has on students. The most common question I get by other Arcadia students is, what grade did you get? I'm not the only one who experiences this. It is a cycle where students constantly ask about other people's grades. But the reason why people ask about grades is not that they care about their peers. It is because they are comparing themselves to your peers and judging them based on their grades. Grades are a symbol of intellect here. If you have all A's, then you are deemed smart. If you have a B or worse grades than all A's, then people will look at you poorly. Most of us were never taught that grades aren't everything. Most of us were never taught that grades could be biased depending on the teacher. In fact, to illustrate this, I remember a common joke in middle school that went along the lines of A is average, B is bad, C is can't have dinner, D is don't come home, F forgotten. This is just the tip of the iceberg. I cannot tell you how many other friends and students I've seen stress themselves out and devastate their health, devoting themselves to try to maintain impossible grades. It's not just grades either. Students are judged based on their extracurricular activities, whether it be volunteering, being a club officer, being part of a team on campus. You get a certain level of prestige for taking these positions, and your peers constantly judge you based on it. What do you get when you combine a student with an unhealthy idea of grades and activities with an environment which constantly judged them based off of it? You get coping. I cope by playing video games. I played Civilization VI, Greek Sierra Kings II, and Fire Emblem Three Houses to help take off the burden and the focus of this reality which I have to face. I have friends who have coped in different ways as well. I have friends who entertain themselves on social media. I have friends who hide in their studies, focusing on the fun parts of learning to hide the pain. I have friends who get angry about politics and almost everything around them, just not to think about academics. These people are doing ridiculous and seemingly unproductive things, not for the hell of it, but because in a world where there's nothing else to provide solace and comfort, the most significant, insignificant actions have meaning. However, I've seen the vilest sides of coping too. I've seen vaping on campus relied on as a crutch. 
I have seen bullying happen because the persecutors have nothing else to distract them from their misery. I have seen people making fun of racial and ethnic minorities, the LGBTQ plus community, and women, all because the only things that they've wanted to cope with is cruelty. Coping is a two-way street. It can help you get through the hardest of times, but it also brings unwarranted side effects. And AHS is an example where the difference between healthy and dangerous coping is its most drastic. Then, the question arises. Why do these students have such an obsessive mentality about grades and school? Simply put, it's a matter of culture. It's no secret that AHS has major Asian influ- Eastern Asian influences, and many Caucasian Americans have praised the high academic rigor and familial focus that East Asians bring with them. Arcadia High School is an example of this, where the atmosphere is so shaped by the East Asian focus on academics and schooling. While many point out that academic focus is a good thing, thanks to high achieving students and overall better statistics, there's negative side to these influences was often omitted in common American analyses of East Asian cultures is a draconian extent. Families and parents are willing to put pressure on students to work hard and do well in school. I believe many times these intentions are well intended, yet the extent and the gravity to which academics is focused on is by no means a healthy extent. I have a friend who is pressured so harshly by his family to become a doctor, to the point where his interest in social studies, politics, and history are all dismissed, despite his eagerness to learn those subjects. To pursue those interests would be to abandon his family, and all he has is his family. I have another friend. He is the sweetest, kindest person I could think of. However, he crushes himself mentally and strains himself physically to the point where he has to sleep during school hours. I hold these friends dearly in my heart. To see them crushed by the world around them and restrained by a worst of a culture I share with them is devastating. Another friend has even told me that his parents told him to treat school like a war zone, and he takes those words to heart. These are student-focused occurrences. However, let me be clear that parents, that some parents have a role in endorsing these circumstances at Arcadia High School. I have listened to parents whisper and gossip about other students, and constantly compare their other kids to more achieving students. Worst, I've seen parents only take pride in their children for social status, with little regard for their kids' well-being. Students have these obsessive ideas about grades and academics, not only because of their peers, but because some parents endorse this unhealthy competitive environment and, constant, and constantly implement this idea that grades, academics, and extracurriculars determines your lot in life. When peers and parents are no solution to this issue, it seems that we must rely on the authorities to sort this disaster out. However, we find no solace in the neglect. At the time of recording this, it has been less than 72 hours since news of Dylan Shan's sexual debauchery and illicit recording. The reason why he was able to get away with so much this past year was because he was in a position of power. As a member of student government, you are given prestige and power. You already need a popularity to become a member of the associated student body, but now you have the respect of your peers, who honor you due to your position and the power to build a relationship with Arcadia High School admin- admins. There, therefore, a victim of illicit sexual activity by Dylan Chan will be utterly destroyed if they try to talk about their trauma in the normal Arcadia High School setting. Dylan Chan, with the respect of his peers, the prestige of our of associated student body, and the power of communication of Arcadia High School admin, admins, could turn the tables and call the victim a liar who just wanted to bring him down. I'm not calling AHS admins liable for the action of Dylan Chan, but I'm calling you directly responsible for the position of honor he was able to harness and the power he was able to exercise. If he did not have that link to administration of Arcadia High School, nor the privileges sanctioned upon him, he would have not been in a comfortable position to displace accusations against him in a school setting. The, the student focus on positions of power and extracurriculars is unhealthy and detrimental 
but is only facilitated by a neglect of the authority that governs this school. Miss Dillman, Mr. Vanazdal, Mr. Forsey, and my fifth grade teacher, Mrs. Warzakin, who is now at the district. I want to address you and the entirety of the people in charge, not only AHS, but also Arcadia Unified School District. Your governance, or thereby lack of it, has neglected our, the students of Arcadia for far too long. These flimsy attempts to try to show mental health awareness are blasphemy at the real struggles here. We do not need your condescending tips to read a book or spend time outdoors for our mental health. We need an acknowledgement that there is an unhealthy environment at Arcadia High School in which all Arcadia students from every single school end up. We need you to stop using pictures of National Merit Scholarship semifinalists without asking about the strife, the pain, and the sleepless nights that brought them here. We need these students to share their stories and how it really is going through four years of Arcadia High School. We need you to stop abusing East Asian culture and the obsession with grades to garnish your reputation, relish your resumes, and brag a bit about being a U.S. News and World Report gold medal school three times over. We need you to stop sending students who do not meet the perfect Arcadia standard to Rancho Learning Center for the sake of garnishing graduation rates. We need you to stop switching, sweeping controversies under the rug to protect the perfect school image. How many other Dylan Chans have committed sexual atrocities, and how many others have gotten away with it under AUSD's watch? Because if the status quo continues, there will be more victims, and most of them will never receive the care or the justice they deserve. There is a reason why students do not come back to Arcadia after college. It's because they remember the neglect, the constant judgment, and the never-ending competitiveness that drove them mad. You may think that this is just a phase and it will all blow over soon, but I would do everything in my capacity to let people know what happened to Arcadia High School until systematic and foundational change is implemented. If you are an incoming freshman watching this, I want you to know something. Arcadia High School will give you many great things. You will make best friends who you will keep for life. You will get to meet teachers who have such a precise and knowledgeable outlook on their subject. Moreover, you may have the best moments in your life here. But never forget that you are great. You are wonderful beyond grades or activities. Your hopes and dreams will incarnate into action which will propel you forward. Know that your happiness and self-worth is not in grades or activities, but is in just you as a human being. You may learn to love the school as deeply as I do. But remember that love is also acknowledging the faults of the love and working to mend the damage. I love Arcadia High School. I will continue to. But these complaints and these problems need to be addressed. Every student knows these problems, and we will continue to talk about it until foundational change is implemented. Thank you very much.